Hello ladies and gentlemen, Martin here and I hope you enjoyed Christmas. Today, welcome to this second part of the architecture asset tutorial. While in the previous part we created a base of our model, this time we'll be focusing on these wreaths made of individual leaves and flowers. In this chapter you'll learn a bit about modeling and particle setup aimed again at beginner Blender users. So without further ado, let's get to work. Now let's start off the creation of our reef by making a circular basis from which later we will grow our leaves. For that first hide the geometry we created previously, then hit shift A, go to the curve menu and create a NURB circle. Let's just center it in the scene now by typing 0 to the location transforms. Now let's create a basis for our first leaf. Let's start with a simple cube. Position it in the middle of the scene and scale it with S. If you hit X, you will be able to scale the cube just along the X axis. In the edit mode, which you get in by hitting Ctrl Tab, let's add one edge loop that is done by Ctrl R. By the way, all these shortcuts I showed in the previous part of the tutorial and you can also download a shortcut list from my site. Link is in the description. Hitting C you can activate the paint selection mode, which I'm doing here, and selecting these vertices. You can then scale them down to shrink the ending of the future leaf. Also let's now select this side of the leaf and move it on Y axis by hitting G and Y. Using these shortcuts let's shape the model until you come out with something like I have. Uh, it's not an exact science here, after all it is just the leaf, so no worries here. If you want to quickly bend your model, you can simply select one of these vertices on the side and hit O, or you can activate this icon down here. With the proportional editing active, you will be able to rotate not only the selected vertices, but also the closest neighboring ones. You can simply adjust the size of the affected area by rolling your mouse wheel. In my opinion, this is one of the best features of Blender editing. Now let's hit Ctrl 2 and see how our model looks subdivided. Add in a new edge loop here to make the mesh look less like a noodle and then paint select this corner, squashing it again on the X axis. For now it doesn't really look like a leaf, we will improve that later when texturing it. All that's important at this moment is setting up the particle system for the reef. Also let's now duplicate this mesh by hitting Shift D. Now to make our wreath three dimensional, let's hit spacebar to find a command, type in convert and then choose mesh from curve option from this menu. This allows us to go to the edit mode, select all and extrude this geometry, which will later give us a better propagation of the leaf particles. Also let's jump into the edit mode with one of our duplicate leaves and change it up a bit so that they both do not look the same. In fact, let's duplicate this leaf one more time and change it up as well. With that, we are almost ready to set up our particle systems. Before we do that, however, let's change the position of the leaf's origin. See that orange dot in the middle? That's the origin of the object. Let's go to the edit mode, select all our vertices with A and push the mesh so that one end is sitting on the orange dot. This way the object will have its root there, rotating around it. And in case of our particle system, the particles will be positioned from this origin point, so they won't be growing from the center of the leaf. I did the same for the rest of the leaves, so go ahead and place your origins. If you now select all your leaves and hit Ctrl G, it will group them together, or rather it will create a collection, which you can name down here. Let's type in something like leaf GRP. Ok, finally, time to create our particle system. Navigate to the particle menu here and hit this new button. Then name your particle system and you can copy paste the name also here in the particle settings. The difference between a system and settings is that multiple systems on various layers and objects can share the same settings. It will be clear later, don't worry. Now let's change the type to hair and then navigate down here to the render tab where in the render as pulldown you can choose collection. Now down here just define the leaf grp collection we created and here we go, we're done. <laughs> no, far from done. First let's solve the leaf positioning. 
We can try to recalculate the normals, which is basically an information which way different faces of the mesh are facing. We can turn them to be uniform. You do that by selecting all your faces in the edit mode and hitting Ctrl N. Okay, that just flipped our particles. So what else can we do? Uh, we can go directly into the settings of our particles and with this advanced option checked, activate the rotation menu. Here you can play around with different orientation axes. In our case, choose normal. Now this looks better, doesn't it? We can even randomize the result a bit more and our wreath is starting to shape up. Of course, in reality, it would not be a perfect circle. The leaves would be woven into some sort of a string and it would hang from some sort of a knob. So it would probably sag on one side. That's what I'm doing here. I'm selecting one vertex and pushing it to the side with proportional editing active. If you want to quickly position the wreath onto the side of the pedestal, you can activate the snapping option here, set it to faces and also align rotation. All you have to do then is hold down control and then hit G to move your wreath. It will snap to the side of the mesh and for it to snap based on the origin of your model, set it to center. Then just scale the wreath properly, rotate it, and here we are, we have the first wreath placed. Now we have a slight problem here, one that will probably be solved in the later versions of Blender 2.8. We can always see the emitter in the preview render. It used to be that in render options of our particle system, all you had to do when you wanted to hide the emitter, in our case the circle, was to uncheck this show emitter option here. However, if that doesn't work for you in Blender 2.8, there is a workaround. Just uncheck the show emitter option in particle settings, then go to the object properties of our wreath and to the duplication menu where you uncheck both display and render duplicator. With that, you may have to refresh the visibility of your particles up here and then it should start working. Now after that, I kept playing with the shape of my leaves a bit more. This is really just about making it into a shape you like and that looks good when used as particles on the wreath. This is just an experimenting phase, so there's not really a plan behind it. So you can just watch, try to do the same with your wreath until you arrive at a result you like. Here you can see me putting two 3D views next to each other, helping me edit the leaves and see the particle result at the same time. This is the shape and the particle settings I've ended up with. In the end, I also created this little peg here using a simple cylinder to indicate something that's holding the wreath in its place. You can again just hold down control and your snapping will be activated, then you just move it to place. It's time now to duplicate your wreath. You can hit Shift D to create a unique duplicate and then edit it in the edit mode. To quickly rotate the third duplicate to its place on the other side of the pedestal, you can try this workflow. Just zero out the 3D cursor position, which places it in the center of the scene, and then select your wreath. In the pivot menu, activate the 3D cursor option and hit R. Your newly duplicated wreath will rotate along the position of the 3D cursor. You can now hit Z to lock the rotation to the Z axis, and rotate the model 180 degrees onto the other side. With that done, we can move on to the other variation of the wreath. In the same way we created the circular wreath, we can now make the hanging one. For that, choose a Bezier curve and position it here on the top part of the pedestal. Holding down G with the snapping active by holding control, it should jump there when you start moving the curve. With this Bezier in edit mode, you can edit two endpoints of the curve. You can move, rotate and scale them, but be sure to jump back to the individual origins pivot point mode before you do so. Basically, if you've ever worked with Bezier handles, this is the same thing. And if you haven't, well, it's time to get used to it. After the two points are positioned and rotated, you can again go in, hit spacebar 
and in the search menu find the convert command and then hit mesh from curve. This way you'll be able to select all the converted vertices in the edit mode and by hitting E extrude them making a plane out of a 2D curve. Once that's done go to the particles menu and apply the same particle settings as we used previously. Here you can see that we can apply the same settings to different particle systems on different objects. However, since I want to do some changes to it, let's hit this plus button here. And now we made a copy of the settings unique just for this hanging wreath. We can now adjust the values without changing the original wreaths. So let's make the leaves here a bit smaller. The size of four will probably do. And also let's make the count just 100. One thing I decided to do as well is deleting one side of the leaf models, effectively making them 2D. I realized that later, when I put the pedestal into big scenes, I'll have a lot of geometry on my plate. To save me some rendering headaches, and since these small leaves don't really need to be three-dimensional, it won't really be noticeable, let's just make them 2D planes and figure out little details in the texturing phase. So what follows is deleting faces and once more a lot of playing around with the shape of the leaves. So I'll speed it up here. Each time you adjust the size and shape of the leaves, you should check the settings of your particles, whether it still looks okay or needs rotating or resizing. I keep playing with the number of the particles, their size and the randomized parameter of the rotation. When you're happy with the look of the wreath, go on and duplicate the top wreath as well using the same techniques I already showed you. And here we go, the leaf particles are ready. Let's move on to the rose particles now. Now let's create the rose flower that we will scatter among the leaves. Let's start by making a plane and hitting Ctrl 2 to subdivide it, changing the subdivision method to simple. After that, apply the modifier. Now with the proportional editing active, start shaping the first petal until it's nicely rounded. Let's speed up the process here because we're mostly repeating the same thing that I already showed you. In the previous part, I added the smooth shading option into my quick favorites menu, so you can see me using it here. After that, you can hit Ctrl 2 as well to subdivide the model twice with the sub D modifier. Now with this smooth model, do some more shaping. Just as I did with the leaves, I have duplicated the petals here and created three unique ones. Very quickly I went in and laid out the UVs by just selecting all the faces in the edit mode and hitting unwrap. Don't forget to apply your scale before you unwrap. You do that by hitting Ctrl A. In the image editor up here you can switch to the UV edit mode, hit U for each petal and choose unwrap. After you've done it with all the petals, just select them all, go to edit mode and here on this image editor, first hit average island scales and then pack islands. We will talk about UVing in the later chapters of this tutorial, so no worries here if you don't really know what you're doing. Now your main goal is to duplicate, rotate and position your petals so that they form a flower. Once you manage to do that, you can select all of them and then hit Ctrl J to join the petals into a single model. You can now right click on this bottom part of your flower which shifts your 3D cursor right into that spot. With that, hit spacebar and type set origin. From the menu, choose origin to cursor and here you go. This is a second method for changing the position of the origin point to precisely where you want it. Ok now let's make three unique variations of this flower, hitting shift D and then in the edit mode playing around with the various petals. To quickly select a whole petal you can simply select one vertex of that plane and then Ctrl L which selects the region. That helps a lot with this sort of editing where you have a lot of separate parts in one object. 
good. All we have to do now is group these flowers together, just as we did with the leaves. Then create a new slot in our particle systems for this wreath. Set up our group, or rather a collection in the render menu of the particle system. And then just play around with the rotation, number of particles and their size. Good, and finally, once you're happy with the look of the flowers propagated along the wreath, start adding this new particle slot to the rest of the wreaths. Don't forget to name your particle settings properly. I named it flower particles, and then you just go in for each of the wreaths. You add in a new system with this plus button, and then set the settings to flower particles. With that done, you've successfully finished this part of the tutorial. So my friends, I do hope you liked the second part of this tutorial series and be sure to tune in next time when we'll start with the sculpting process. So if you've liked this video, consider subscribing and also be sure to check out the Modeling Spartan Warrior course. The Christmas discount is still available ending January the 2nd. I hope to see you in 2019. Bye bye for now.